you break a 24 hour dry fast? Well, I'll tell you how not to break a 24 hour dry fast and it's by not becoming the cookie monster. Do not eat every cookie inside or every pizza inside or everything that ends up in front of your table because you've gone out to a restaurant and ordered the left side of the menu. <laughs> Guys, you need to take this seriously. A 24 hour dry fast is equal to a three day water fast or wet fast, meaning it's like your stomach hasn't eaten anything for three days. If you go out and pig out, you could not just feel ill, you could feel like sick, like nauseous, you're cramping, you'd be doing so much harm for yourself. Breaking the dry fast is even more important than actually fasting. Not just a dry fast, any fast. Breaking a fast is really, really important part of the process of fasting. Because after all of that deprivation and after all of that like healing that happens because your body doesn't get free nutrition from for, by itself, your body's now waiting for that perfect, that perfect healthy, healthy nutrition, healthy vitamins, and the perfect kind of food for it. So don't feed it rubbish. Don't feed it too much. Give it an easy, gentle, slow access to food and, and kind of restarting your whole body again. Firstly, we not need to think about refeeding, right? So refeeding is the process that happens after fasting and it's usually twice the length of the fast. So if your dry fast is one day, then you refeed for two days. Most people, when they do a three day water fast, for instance, they need to actually do refeeding for six days because that's twice the length of their fast. But you're gonna get to cheat because you're only doing a one day fast. The way you should look at a dry fast though for 24 hours is to think of it as a three day water fast with two days where you can eat food. That's how you break your fast. You wanna break your fast with foods that are really kind of particular, special kinds of foods so that you're doing the best benefit and also in a special kind of way, which I'm gonna talk about shortly, so that you give the best benefits for your body and your health. How do you break your dry fast? Well, you drink water obviously but it's not just it you can have water just on its own that's totally fine as well obviously have the best kind of water you can find and you want to drink that first glass of whatever it is you're drinking really slowly so the first sip that you have you want to like mm, 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 mm. you just kind of swish it all around your mouth get that saliva all mixed in together and then you swallow it. Now, you don't have to just have water when you do this. This is your first glass. Uh, you can have uh, aloe vera. Sometimes you put some aloe vera, a couple of tablespoons of aloe vera, or you can have, hold on, I've got something else here, apple cider vinegar. It's gotta say with the mother on it, guys. It, it's gotta say with the mother. With the mother, mother is not like a cult. It's it's. It's the probiotic, it's like this, the enzymes in it that it makes it really healthy. So you want to have that, not filtered apple cider vinegar. Also, you can have probiotics. I have this every time. It's just probiotic supplements, 20 billion to 70 billion CFU per gram. If you're sensitive, if your stomach is sensitive, then don't have such a high count, maybe have like 30 billion CFU. So have these things with your first glass, that's absolutely fine, really good for you. Swish it all around and drink it down. Now, don't drink anything for the next hour. The next hour, you have another glass. The first glass, you wanna drink for 15 minutes, right? Little by little, sip by sip. The next glass, you have the next hour, another whole glass, then another hour after that, you have another whole glass, and then after that, go for it, drink as much as you want. Just keep hydrating yourself. That's perfectly fine, really good for you. Now let's move on to the kind of foods you should be having. The first meal that you have after a 24 hour dry fast should be a tiny little meal, guys. Do not binge, do not eat whatever it is you've prepared. And don't go outside and eat, by the way. Make sure everything that you're eating has been prepared by you. If you're at home or if you're at office or whatever, make sure it's the stuff that you know what is in it. We don't want any like scary stuff, okay? Even salt, no salt. The first day of breaking your fast, your body's salt composition is completely changed. The minerals in your body have gone, like they've, it's doing something else. So don't um, just take a bunch of salt because you will hold all that water and your body's just gonna bloat. 
So you wanna have a first meal of something really easy to digest, really small, less than 500 calories, less than the size of your fist, or fits into a teacup, like some soup. So have like bone broth or vegetable broth. Uh, I like miso soup, miso soup is, is really healthy because uh, that's fermented as well. Um, you can also have fish soup, that's pretty good. But not soup, broth, right? So it's boiled with no salt, but tons of nutrition from stuff that's already in it. Have just that and then don't have anything for like maybe an hour. Give it, let it digest, let it sort of sit in there for a while. Then the next hour you can have something a little bit bigger. I sometimes have yogurt with nuts and seeds. I quite like that. If I break my fast a bit later in the day, I like to have something maybe a bit more stodgy and a bit more savory. So I have eggs. I have either one egg or two eggs, depending on how I'm feeling. But if you, you, you'll notice that your appetite is pretty small anyway. You can't really eat a lot. Your mind thinks you can eat a lot, but your tummy, if you're listening to it, doesn't want too much. I'll usually have like one egg, but maybe like a big egg. And I will have avocado with it. And maybe sometimes some tomatoes, but usually just avocado and egg, a little bit of olive oil over that. Ooh, yummy. Makes me really, really happy. Also because I'm eating more foods that are uh, keto friendly. You don't want any carbs, guys. You don't want to eat sugar with like throughout the day if you can. If you're concerned about weight gain, especially because your body will put on weight if you eat carbs. It's just gonna get shot. It's gonna spike up your sugar, your glucose levels, your insulin levels, and you're gonna put on weight. But if you're not concerned about it and it's no big deal to you, uh, then you can have fruits as well. You can have fresh fruits, you can have uh, coconut water. It's gonna spike your sugar up, but if it's hydrating and it's what you're craving, yeah, sure, go for it. I would recommend being on keto mostly for the first day so that your body can kind of regulate itself or, or just like really, really low carbs. But yes, that, that's my recommendation. So as I was saying, here's a really, really good tip for what you can eat. Whenever you're having foods, because you can't have salt, add this. This, I know it looks like Parmesan cheese, but it is actually... Oh, I love the smell of this. It is nutritional yeast. Extremely powerful hack to add into your food. Nutritional yeast is actually, it's so good for you. It's full of amino acids, it's full of proteins that vegans actually eat this as a supplement. They have it on everything. They call it nooch. I have it with my eggs. So, because I can't put any salt on it, I just gotta put that like egg all over with, with the nutritional yeast. And then I also put it into, well, if I'm making like a little sauerkraut or if I'm making some kind of salad, I just chuck it in to add loads of flavor, but no salt. So that's one hack you could totally try. Also, you wanna eat probiotic stuff the whole day, as much as you can, not just that supplement. You want to have sauerkraut, for instance. This is sauerkraut if you don't know what it is. There you go. It's actually just cabbage and salt and water, right? So it's brine. Be careful with the with the salt and water part of that because stuff like kimchi, which is really, really good for you as well, also has high salt. So be wary of having too much of these things. You can have a little bit, have it later in the day as well, maybe as your second meal. Don't have it as your first meal because really the first meal is just zero salt. Even the soup that you're talking about, um, that I was talking about the fish broths and all of that, no salt, yeah? Also, yogurts. Yogurts are fantastic. I have coconut yogurt, but experts recommend kefir. It's kind of like a yogurt, but it's done with kefir grains. It has an even higher number of bacteria, good bacteria for you, so that's also good to include in your diet. Have all of that stuff, guys, the whole day. Any probiotics you can think of that is not too salty, Include it in your day. The reason for this is because your stomach is completely a new, new environment. It is, your gut microbiome has changed. You don't have the same gut that you had a day before. Your gut now, because bad bacteria has not gotten no food, they've died. So let's encourage, this is a great opportunity to encourage the good bacteria to grow. So that's why the day, just the day after, make sure you have as many probiotics as possible. Have your apple cider vinegar, have kombucha. If you can find good kombucha, like without any sugar, have kombucha. Just feed your body with loads of love. Also, like I said, have small meals and you wanna have your meals really like spaced out, like make sure they're not all, you're not having one huge meal, meal all together. You're having small little meals, two to four hours, just space them out. You can have, of course, as I said, nuts, fruits and stuff, depending on whether, what your diet goals are, what your goals are to with the dry fast. But 
keep it easy, keep it unprocessed, keep it raw, keep it healthy. Any vegetables that you might have, don't have cruciferous vegetables, have like boiled vegetables if they are hard. If you're having carrots, for instance, try not to have carrots, try and have like cucumbers. Cucumbers, spinach, uh, some broccoli is okay. Things that, not artichoke, even though artichoke is a good prebiotic, it's hard to digest. So you want to go for really easily digestible stuff and eggs and yogurt and nuts and raspberries. Some fruits that aren't high in sugar, you can have those fruits, strawberries, raspberries, those are fine. And that's it guys, you know, make sure you chew all your food as well. Take some time chewing, because half of the work in digestion happens in your mouth. It's like that's all is your saliva is full of enzymes that help your body digest. So help your stuff. It does the digestion work before it goes into your tummy. So have that and make sure you are just in a space of love and the next day also do the same thing. You don't have to be too fussy for the second day. The second day you can have slightly bigger meals and you can have a bit of salt, not too much, but still you're on the refeeding process. So that's how you should still eat after your 24 hour dry fast. So that's it guys. If you like this video, please, well, like it and also share it. And also subscribe to my channel for more amazing information on what dry fasting can do for you and how to do it and what the benefits are and everything that you need to do about dry fasting. Also go check out my article, how to break a 24 hour dry fast and also what to eat after a 24 hour dry fast linked below. And yeah, check out my website, hackfasting.com. Right guys, love you, speak soon, bye.